Hey everyone, it's Tommy from the Glory Crease Network, and today we're going to go through something that I have had a lot of requests to do, and that is how I take out the knee lock in a Reebok and a CCM pad. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I recommend doing this, and the biggest one is because of rotation. Okay, so by taking this out, there's really, you know, nothing that's going to impede your rotation anymore. It's going to be mostly nylon on nylon, or if you wear socks, it'll be the sock on the nylon underneath. Now, the other reason is because I think this whole thing is pretty much a vestigial organ. And that basically means that there's no reason to have this anymore, at least this portion right here. So I wear very big and bulky knee guards, and so I don't need this extra space right here, all this padding. We don't go down on the front of the face of the pads anymore, so really there's no reason for this padding whatsoever. So I prefer just to go ahead and take it out. Now, that said, this is not for everyone. So make sure that you're going to like the result before you do it. If you have a friend who's done it in the past, or if you are just really sure that this is what you want, go right ahead, but otherwise do it at your own risk. Now, there's a couple other things. This doesn't work with every brand of pad, and it only works with certain types of knee locks. So this right here is what's called the soft uh, knee lock and is not recessed. So it works with this one, and this is the reason why I get this specific knee lock. If you go with the stiff or the hard padding that Reebok or CCM provides, it's not going to work for that because it ends up being sewn right here in the middle. Or at least it might be possible, but I still wouldn't recommend it because I have never done that. The other thing is if you get a recessed knee lock, it will not work at all because that's going to be recessed and really there's no point in doing it at that point because there's not any of this padding here anyway. But there is that uh, Nash material or a sure grip material still. I think it's unnecessary, but nonetheless, you're not going to be able to remove that or else you're going to be seeing the internals of the pads. So in order to get started, we're going to need two tools. And the first one is a seam ripper, and it looks like this. You can find it at pretty much any department store or fabric store. If you go to a department store, it's probably in the fabric section. It basically rips seams, and it's going to be very easy to get through this material. Now, the other thing we're going to need is an X-Acto knife. Okay, so these are extremely sharp, and this is what's going to allow us to get through the very thick binding. So, as long as you have those two materials, we're ready to get going. Now, first things first. We're going to want to make sure that there is no straps or any other material in our way, because once you cut it, you can't go back, so you have to be very careful. So, the first thing that we're going to cut is this very large binding that's on this side. So here is where your knee is going to land. This is a sure grip material. We're not going to want to cut any of that. And if you can kind of see in this little section right here, there is a seam that goes straight down. And we're going to want to remain on the knee side of that seam because we want that material to stay there. And that way it's going to hide any excess material underneath this knee landing area. So, I'm going to take our trusty X-Acto knife, and remember, this is extremely sharp. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the binding is away from the nylon material underneath because I don't want to cut through the under material, or otherwise it's going to start fraying, and you may end up with damage to the pad. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get as close to that seam as possible while making this initial cut. And now I'm going to cut upwards because I don't want to cut down and potentially uh, cut into this Nash material or the sure grip material or the nat or the nylon that is underneath. So this first cut is extremely important. I'm going to put it right here if you can see that. And it is all the way through. And I'm going to kind of saw upwards a little bit. Okay, so now I've made the initial cut right here. And this right here is the binding. And now the binding is just cut a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and make an incision on the bottom as well. And this is another area where we have to be very careful because here's the knee channel or the leg channel underneath. And this is a Nash material that we also don't want to cut into. So I'm going to have to get as low as I can here close to this leg channel and make sure that I'm not going to puncture the underneath leg channel. So I'm going to try to hold these apart while I very carefully make an incision. And sometimes I would probably recommend you just flip the pad over and do it the exact way I did it before, which is basically to cut up, but it'd be too difficult to show you guys that on camera. So I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see it. 
Now here's where I want to make the cut right here. And let's see if I can make a precision cut right here. We're going to go up. I know it's probably difficult for you guys to see. A little bit. All right, let's see if I cut all the way through that binding. And it looks like it is almost all the way through. I'm going to cut just a little bit higher, too. Right. Let's see here. I'm going to try to get this knee lock out of the way a little bit. Maybe you guys will be able to see it just a little bit better. And I have to be careful with the point of this, of course, because I don't want it to puncture any of this area. It looks like it's pretty well cut. Maybe just a little bit higher. Let's see if I can get any higher. Again, I have to be very careful not to puncture the material underneath. There we go. I can kind of feel it let go a little bit. So now I'm going to put the X-Acto knife down, and I'm going to take the seam ripper. Now, the reason why I'm using the seam ripper is usually there's a little ball on the end of the seam ripper right here that protects the fabric underneath. Now, mine unfortunately ended up um, breaking off, so I don't really have that ability anymore, but if you get a new one, you'll have that little ball there and it works out much better. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the ball, or this end right here, the non-sharp end, is the one that is resting upon the material underneath. So, your sharp part right here is going to be on the top because you don't want to puncture the material that's underneath. So, I'm going to put it like this, and basically, you just kind of press down and it goes straight through that nylon material. And again, you're going to want to get as close as you can to that seam that is underneath or right next to it because ultimately that extra material is going to be hidden underneath the, um, this portion of the knee landing area. So I'm going to keep going down, trying to be as careful as I can not to make any mistakes here. And again, you can kind of see this is very difficult to do because I'm trying to get as close as I can to that seam over there. Now, I'm most of the way through. You can see there is some padding right here. That's the padding that I don't care about that I want to get rid of. So what I'm going to do now is make sure that I have that out of the way. And now I can either continue going down or I can go up. Now, usually in this case, again, I'd probably flip the pad over and do it because it's much easier for me, but I'm trying to show you guys exactly what I would do, so, um, and it would be difficult to get that on camera. So I'm going to try to go up here and see if that will work. If not, I'll just go back to going down. So I'm going to make sure that the ball portion is going to be the one that's going to be resting on the nylon that is underneath and getting as close as I can to that seam. I'm going to start going up. And it looks like it's going to be pretty difficult for me to go up here. There's just a lot of material underneath, and I can't quite see. And I want to make sure that I'm not um, getting any excess material. So I'm going to start going down again. So here we go. Make sure that I have the right position. And we're going to start going down again. And remember, do not get any excess material cut. Remember, you only have one opportunity to do this. Now I can tell I'm not getting all the material, so that's okay. And just go back up, go back down again. And it's okay to do that. You can do it in layers if you want to, because there's multiple layers of material under here. In fact, there's the nylon, there's the padding, there's sort of a sub padding underneath, and then there's nylon again. So as you can see, I didn't get all of the materials that time, and that's okay. I just go like that, there we go. So, as you can see here, now we have this one side cut. Here's the padding underneath. This is all that padding that I don't want. There's no reason to have, what is that, a half inch or an inch worth of padding because we never go down on the front side of our pads anymore, so there's just no reason to have it. Now, over here, you can see just how close I was to that thread. I'm going to try to open this up a little bit for you guys, and now you can probably see it. 
you can see that here's some padding that's underneath and here is the thread that I was trying to get as close as I could next to and now when I put the knee landing area back it covers up that excess material and that will never fray it will never um, get damaged and it doesn't damage the pad that's underneath so now you can see well this is interesting this is sort of new there's sort of a uh, a velcro material this is the female side of the velcro underneath i'm not really sure why that's there um oh it's an extension from this outer pad so that's kind of new but uh, that's also unnecessary i don't really care that it's there now this is the real tricky part i'm going to put the pad back a little bit so you guys can see this part right here is extremely difficult to cut. I'm gonna recenter my pad here so you guys can see. There's cord right here, and we definitely don't wanna cut those cords. If you cut those cords, you will be sending your pad to um, a repairman to have these cords redone, and it will cost you probably hundreds of dollars. So we definitely don't wanna cut those cords. Now, we again have very thick binding up here and we have that nylon material. So the nylon material is very easy to cut, but the problem is we have these cords that are coming through. So that's gonna be pretty difficult to get around. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our X-Acto knife out again. And the same process as before, but this time we wanna make sure that we're not gonna cut this cord. So I'm just gonna go through the nylon here, the nylon binding, and then make an incision up. I'm gonna redo that one. There we go. So the binding has been cut now, and you're gonna want that cut to be right in the middle because we're gonna go right down to where that cord comes through. And we're gonna do the same thing on the underside down here. So, and again, normally I'd flip the pad over and do the exact same way, but because it's too difficult to position the pad that way, I'm gonna do something a little more risky, and I'm just gonna go up. Remember, do not puncture the nylon or this Nash or sure grip material that's underneath. So I have to be very careful here. Okay. And there we go. I almost cut my finger, but I didn't, so I'm still good to go. All right, put that X-Acto knife down before I hurt myself. And we have to be very careful here because, again, we have the cords. Do not cut the cords but the cords are going through holes in the material. So I wish I could kind of show you guys a little bit better, but the cord is coming through the nylon material here, and we can use that as a guide in order to go up. So I would use the end with the ball because I want to make sure that I'm protecting the material underneath, but we can use that as a guide in making sure that we're not going to get that cord. So here we go, and there we go. So now, I've cut the material down to where the cord comes through. And we're just gonna go basically straight down from there, making sure that we're not gonna cut the cord. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can either go from hole to hole, and you can get pretty close to that cord, which you probably don't wanna do because you don't wanna accidentally cut it. The other thing you can do um, is get next to the cord, either on this side or on the other side, and then kind of go from the sides and it's a little bit easier um, and a little bit more careful. So I think we're probably gonna go that way today. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to see if I can cut down the size of this material and that way it allows me a little bit more room to uh, get in there and get the holes where the cords are. Again, do not cut those cords. Okay, and looks pretty good. I should have prefaced too beforehand that uh, one thing that you can do, you can actually keep this here if you wanted to. It would just be hanging on by the cord material or by the material that would be hanging on by the cords. I don't know how long that it would actually stay there or if you would uh, continue fraying that material. Um, I don't... Um, Put my elastic bands over here so I don't care so that's why I go ahead and I just take the whole thing off. Now we're at the bottom again and this is where we need to be careful because we have that cord so I'm gonna go the opposite way now 
and making sure I don't cut anything that I don't want to cut. Let's see if we can go up here. There's kind of a lot of material in through here, so it's a little more difficult, and you have to make sure that you're not going to cut that material underneath. And I especially need to make sure because I don't have that little ball on the end of my uh, seam ripper. So this is what that portion looks like. We're not going to need that anymore. And now this sort of free floats. Now this gives us additional flexibility in order to make sure that we can get underneath here and um, we can make the additional cuts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick the safe end of the seam ripper inside this hole if I can and try to cut the material that's to the side. Now again this is for a very delicate and precise hand because obviously do not cut the cord, do not cut the material underneath. This is not easy to do and especially not at this angle. So you may want to play around with the angle of the pad to make sure that you get as precise of a cut as you need. What I'm actually going to do here because I don't have very good leverage with this camera angle is I'm going to see if I can get the safe end of my seam ripper right next to that cord and I'm just going to see if I can go up just a little bit. There we go. And now we got the top out and we're just going to do that for the rest of them too. So I'm going to stick the safe end. I'm going to pull that down so now it's in the hole. It's not getting the cord. It's not getting the material underneath a little bit of a jab and it goes straight through. Now this is where it gets a little bit tougher um, because of the angle um, for the camera but I'm gonna try to let's see here I might go down in this case but again I need to make sure that this pokey area isn't going to get into the material underneath so very carefully here I'm going to get that material right here, not getting the cord. And there's a little bit of nylon left, good. So now that came out, perfect. And I have one little bit left. In fact, I only have that one hole left because I already made that incision down there. So I'm going to very carefully again, this time I think I'm gonna flip it around just a little bit. And a little bit of a jab, comes right out, okay? So here, is what uh, the inside of your knee lock looks like. Here's all that padding again. Um, it's gonna come out of there. It's a big old block, just like that. And that we're not gonna need. Now, I see that they kind of left a little string here, so I'm gonna tighten up a little bit of their work here and make sure that there's nothing here that my knee guards are going to end up getting caught on. So there's nothing here that's going to get caught. Um, if you remember back on past pads, um, for example, the E-Flex 2s or the Coho 589s, I took out um, the tie-in for the thigh guard because we don't use thigh guards anymore or we don't tie in knee guards usually. Um, so you're not gonna need that anymore. Now they've replaced that um, with this Velcro. And I'll kind of bring this down for you guys to see. They've replaced it with this Velcro strap right here. And, um, it just goes in between this Velcro. When you don't want that, you just hide it away. Now, as I'm looking at it, um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't just go ahead and take that out. So let's go ahead and do it since we're already here. And there's no reason for me to keep that because I'm not going to use any Velcro tie-ins for my knee guards. Now, what we're gonna need here is just the seam ripper. And again, it'd be best if you have the one with the ball because we're gonna make sure that that material underneath um, does not get caught. So this is really what the seam ripper is made for. It's for ripping these seams that are right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lift it up a little bit and see if I can get a little bit of that uh, sharp area in between. So you can kind of see here, I have the sharp area in between and I'm just going to again make a very small movement upwards, trying not to poke myself. There we go. Now, you can kind of rip it upwards if you want, but you might damage that material that's underneath. So what you're going to want to do is continue ripping those seams using the sharp area that is underneath 
or in between those two prongs of the seam ripper. And this is, can be a little bit delicate of a process right here. I'm going to bring down the pad so you guys can see a little bit better. But you can see I'm bringing up that portion of the Velcro while I'm doing this to make sure that I can see well enough to make a precision cut. There we go. And we might have a couple more here and that's it. There we go. Now we can take out the excess strings. We're not gonna need those anymore. And you can see it does leave little tiny holes where those, uh, where the thread went through before, um, but that usually isn't gonna fray. So I haven't had that fray in the past, um, but do it at your own risk. So now we need to take off this area if you want to. Um, I think I will just for aesthetic sake and just to show you guys how I would do it. So again, you're gonna want the sharp area to go through. You can even do it through the top here. That way it's less likely that it's going to go through any important um, material that's underneath. And I'm going, just going to get that really quick. And I'm certainly not an expert on fabric or sewing or anything, so I'm just doing it the way I know how. And here it's much easier because I can just go through the thread that's on the top. Now, if I go like this, just seeing if that comes up easily, it does. So it looks like this end is just a little bit thicker, not a problem there. And I can take out the excess material afterwards. But here we go. Comes out pretty easily. Again, you probably don't want to rip it too much, or if it's really difficult to get out, you don't want to rip it. Uh, because it might rip the nylon that's underneath. If it comes up easily like that, it's much easier. And then you just make the occasional cut. We're going to have to make a cut underneath on this one again. Because this is the thicker area. Just like on the other side. Let's see if I can get it underneath this material. There we go. Making sure you're not going to cut yourself, of course. Easier said than done. Okay, so there we go. And then I can start on the top again. There we go. And then again, if you aren't comfortable doing it from the bottom, you can do it from the top, like I did before. And you can see this is actually much quicker and safer, so I'd probably recommend just doing it this way. There we go, and let's see, it looks like there's quite a bit of uh, string underneath here that's going to be a little more difficult to get out. There we go. And we can take out the excess string, and if any of it gets caught, and if you can't just pull it out, you can just take your seam ripper and very carefully remove it. This one might be a little more difficult, but basically you just have to pull out most of it. And if there's any areas where it gets caught, you might just have to take your seam ripper and rip out a little bit more. Make some more precision cuts just to get that excess material out. So it might take a little bit of getting used to. It might take some uh, tweezers or something like that, but usually it's not that difficult to get out. I'm going to see if I can get it out for you right now, just to give you guys a quick overview of what it looks like afterwards. There we go. There we go. It's looking great already. And this one I want to make sure I'm not going to cut myself on. There we go. Beautiful. So there we go. We have a completely clean knee lock here with the exception of this material right here. I guess if you really wanted to take this out, you can. I'm probably gonna leave it in for now just because I don't know yet where exactly I wanna attach this Velcro. And I don't think it's going to um, 
in, basically infringe on the area for my knee guard. So that looks absolutely beautiful. And this is what you will want to do if you want to remove your knee lock. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to uh, make a comment on the video and I'll be sure to respond. So like, comment, and subscribe. And good luck. I'll see you out on the ice.